<coughs> okay, this is one of several attempts to try to do this, and I've thrown a little bit of complication into the mix of the, the subject that I was going to cover, and that was basically the wills of individuals that had a, a direct or indirect connection with uh, Dr. Charles Morton. But I thought to myself it would be wise, since I had uh, a couple pieces of information handy to make the case that I asserted before, but now I'm going to show um, proof uh, of um, information that should probably be used in the Dictionary of National Biography uh, for its next update. I by no means do I place any restriction or copyright on this information. I'm passing it on for informational purposes. All my videos are for information, either for fun or for the good of other mankind. So take take my word for it now. You know, but I'm not guarding on to any information and, and backing anybody into a corner and not be able to use my results here. Um, and so this part of this presentation is actually going to be aimed towards helping out uh, the folks that make the Dictionary of National Biography to make a few corrections. That's going to be one of my aims. And um, so I'm going to present the proof that I have, to the extent that I have it. And I think it's pretty good proof and go over the whole thing. Um, so where to start? Okay, so we have Dr. Charles Morton's first wife was named Mary Berkeley, and, and I'll just take a look at this Oxford Dictionary of National Biography quickly, and I'm just going to point out the two things that I know to be incorrect that um, I am just hopeful that my passing information on will result in those things being changed or corrected. Then I'll go into other things that aren't necessarily named, aimed towards the Dictionary of National Biography uh, that are more in the line of being speculative. Um, but that'll be me thinking about and really speculating on why some of these things were misstated in the first place. It has nothing to do with the, the, with the people that are authoring the Dictionary of National Biography now or even back in 1818, I think, when the first release edition that I've seen. Okay, so get to the brass tacks here. Okay, fact number one asserted here in uh, the Dictionary of National Biography. It states that he, meaning Charles Morton, Mary, Mary Berkeley, and Scott died 1768. Now, the source cited for that is the International Genealogical Index, Paris Register Burials, Twickenham, 6 October 1768. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time explaining why, in fact, the IGI, uh, and you'll see it with your own eyes, why the IGI, in fact, is a good source. I'm also going to say that the, citing that as a source is a pr it looks like a pretty good answer, almost a, almost a perfect answer but not quite, but that could be explained away. But um, in fact, no. <laughs> Fortunately, no, the explanation does not work in this case. Okay, so it's got it here is a burial date of 6 October 1768. Now, this I have uh, courtesy of Google. In fact, I, I wouldn't know half, quarter, uh, three quarters of things that I've come to find out we weren't from Google Books. But this uh, publication here of the Histories and Antiquities of Twickingham by Edward Ironside, uh, published in 1797, pretty much verifies what the IGI says. And that's, that is that a Mary Berkeley, not a Mary Morton, was buried at Twickingham on October 6, 1768. And this is these are entries, entries from the um, from the parochial registers, which the introductions here on page I think thirteen. But this page is actually page I couldn't be eighteen. Maybe it's twenty eight up there. Okay, that's the source cited. 
the next now now, now okay now let's get now, okay now I'm gonna show you another record that's gonna cause another problem get some head scratching down there at the Dictionary of National Biography and maybe that'll be good maybe that might help open up some doors to more information that I'd like to have um, okay the next piece of information that is cited in this Dictionary of National Biography is something that I uh, <laughs> I almost recognize right away as something to look into further and that is um, a marriage date, his marriage date to Eliza Pratt, no, sorry, to Mary Lady Savile, signed it as being 1772. And if I could find out, here we go. This period also saw the death of his first wife, Mary, in 1768, which is not right, it was actually 1751. If the Collins Peerage is correct, and that right now is the most authoritative piece of information that I have, and you'll see why. Um, and his marriage to Lady Mary Savile, Nee Pratt, 1706 to 1791, I agree with those dates, and they're backed up by actually by source records, in 1772 right there okay now you look at the bottom over here for a 1772 marriage date you're not going to find it you're not going to see a specific reference you can say hey yeah 1772, yeah, there's the record, but I'll show you the record. I already have done this before, but we're going to get this all together along with this piece of proof that I've got here. And I'm going to go into Jack's genealogy down here. To, I've got a bunch of folders of different pieces of information here. So you can imagine how hard it is for me to keep track of all the different pieces of information, but some marriage records, and here is uh, Charles Morton Wayne Mary Pl Platt in 1767. Now, this is also backed up, by the way, by um, by um, announcements in the general Ma the Gentleman's Magazine or Annual Register and a number of other newspapers. <coughs> okay, around this date. Here we go. So this is actually the parish register entry from St. George, George Bloomberry's, the church that's right across the street from um, the museum. Page 7, 1767, Charles Morton, Esquire of the, this parish, and Mary Wallace of the parish of, I, I gather to guess that's Twickenham, but I'm not quite sure, were married in this church by license, this 25th day of August, 1767. Now, down there it says M. Wallace. Where the hell did I get M. Wallace from? That's a different Charles Morton. No, it's not. And I'll explain to you how I know that is not a different Charles Morton. Indeed. Now, the next thing we need to refer to, and probably the easiest way for me to show this, is to go ahead and go into Google Books. And I am going to look for Records of Lumley. Of the Lumleys, I could probably just go that far. Yes, records of the Lumleys of Lumley Castle, and I'm just going to search for Morton. I'm going to look for actually I'm going to look for Wallace. Actually, I'm going to look for Savile, Lady Savile is a better way to do it. Okay. Um, 
There's a number of pages in here. But I might even be better off. See, the author of this, <laughs> the author of this book, Edith Milner, wrote this book. Um, well, it's, in fact, let me just, if I clear the search, get me up to the front there. Wrote this book in 1904. There are no Milner descendants of Dr. Charles Morton, or Benham descendants of Dr. Charles Morton. This person went in here with historical interest, but mostly geared towards the Lumley family. If there was any bias, it was to make the Lumley family look better than they really did, but certainly it wasn't to um, make Dr. Charles Morton, Lee Savile look better. Although I didn't, I'm not saying that she tried to make him look worse, but we tried. You know, if we want to talk about biases um, against whether you know this record is made up or not, I don't think that this was. Here we go. Perfect page, page two of seven. Going to show it now. Here's a diary entry, and we're talking about. I think uh, if we're talking about. Gertrude Savile's diary, if I'm right. Well, just back here to seven. I'll just show it here. In May 1744, the diary remarks Lady Savile married to Captain Wallace. And we just saw Captain Wallace, right? We just saw a Wallace, that is Mary Wallace. Then, for our reinforcement purposes here, and for our information here, one wonders if you look, okay, there's a Dr. Morton. I'm going to search again. Go to the next one. That's Cardinal Morton. We're not. Interested in that? Ah, I know there was another one. There's another page saying they didn't approve of Dr. Charles Morton. If I could easily look at my references, I wouldn't be fiddling around here. But also reinforced. In fact, I'll just start screwing around with this. I'll just look in my vital records that I've entered. Is of course marriage date is 1767, and we'll look at here. And I'm not even going to rely on that that record there. That's got to be in part one. And by the time I'm done with this, I'll be at half an hour. <clears throat> There we go. 1767, marriages and births, and September 1st, we have 25th with uh, Charles Morton, MD, to Lady Sable. Okay, that ends that discussion. So that was Marie Wallace. She was not married to him in 1772. She was married to him in 1767, and no, Mary Berkeley was not buried in. Uh, Back to the Oxford Dictionary. It was not buried in 1768, because of course that would make either uh, Dr. Charles a divorced man or a 
a um, bigamist, but I think over here, I don't even know if it says widower, Charles Morton. But it re does require a license, so I'm not quite sure. Um, again, I can't verify Lady uh, Mary Berkeley's um, actual burial date. Okay, I'm going to stop with this here because I'm going to keep this thing separate and then I will continue with my presentation as planned.